Welcome back to Postal 2, and welcome back to our pacifist experience. What? You're bloody joking, right? So the game is banned in Australia, but that won't stop us from playing the Apocalypse Weekend. And since we beat the first five days as a pacifist in our last video, why not give the weekend a crack? We're choosing Insano difficulty and choosing not to sin ever again. Oh, and one more thing. I'll be making sure to do some more censorship because I know you guys love that. The weekend starts off with Postal Dude daydreaming, and I'm sorry guys, but I need to censor, okay? I, I need money! And when I say daydreaming, I mean Postal Dude was in a coma after receiving a nasty head wound. But now we're back on our feet, ready to donate some good old sperm. I mean, what the fuck? As we slowly navigate this so-called hospital, I couldn't help but notice that animals are also being treated here too. I guess this reflects heavily on the state of the American healthcare system. Well... I guess it's now time to drop the kids off at school. Honey, I'm home. Damn, this is gonna take a while. This is gonna get me demonetized, isn't it? While I was contributing to the baby bank, the lab workers pissed off the cat so much so that they suddenly just turned into freaking Beyblades. I did not kill this man. I did not kill- Now, not only is flipping people off a defense mechanism, but leveraging cats to our advantage is as well. As we started to flee the hospital, hallucinations began to set in, and this wasn't any ordinary hallucination. It was typical brain rot. No, it wasn't brain rot, but it was worse. It was Gary Coleman. Gary Coleman was on my mind. He was weighing on my conscience. Try not to me. Again, folks, I'm gonna say it, 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 it wasn't me. By jumping out of a nearby window and shimmying along the sides of the buildings, it was only a matter of time before Gary Coleman's hallucinations kicked in. You just shot that cat! <laughs> By picking up the vest, it should keep us safe from those pesky cats. Nothing could protect us from the obstacle courses. The cats had become a real threat, Beyblading anyone in their path, even their rightful owner. But in Postal 2, Nepeticateria offers a solution to calm them down. I hate to say it, folks, but it, this it was the cats. By triggering the front door, we finally escaped the hospital. With our belly empty and yearning for crappy Chinese takeout, the greasy panda was the way to go. Unfortunately, something seemed terribly wrong. The Chinese restaurant had been overrun by zombies with mad cow disease. Our task was simple, take out 20 of them. But we can't. We're a pacifist. How on earth are we going to do this? Let me just stop you right there. Let us rewind this back. We're using this rooftop here to jump, crouch, and glitch to stomp these zombies out of existence. Does this count as a zombie kill or put down? No, it absolutely doesn't. So technically, we can just continue being the little pacifist we are in this zombie apocalypse. After finally completing that tedious objective, I thought I was in the clear. But in typical postal fashion, I was tasked yet again to kill. This highly ranked army officer wanted me to kill cows to try and stop the mad cow disease from spreading through Paradise City. <laughs> But Blue Ben, you, you just killed something in a pacifist run! Well, cows don't really have a statistic, so technically they don't really exist, except for when you accidentally lose a sledgehammer in a cow's buttocks. <laughs> this game deserved better, IGN. Once I began my cow-killing spree, self-proclaimed vegetarian suddenly rocked up and demanded justice. Ow. The mad cow disease was spreading, and it was spreading fast. I broke into a nearby house and stole some Kevlar vet. <laughs> After successfully taking down the cows, the army officer thanked us by rewarding us with a rocket launcher. We ain't got no budget for pigeon missions. The fuck are you kidding me? It's the kids. Gotta think of the kids. Look at the quality of this video! Well, you saw it here, folks. Apparently, that rocket launcher that was given to us was meant to be used to kill pigeons. However, that mission was cut from the game due to budget constraints. Alternatively, you could just download the mission as a mod and play it. But, you know, we're all about censorship around here! Okay, okay. I did not censor this, I swear. This is in the game. It's in the game! But now we're in a publisher's studio because our boss decided to break the fourth wall and ask us to obtain the Postal 2 Goldmaster disc from our now previous publisher. Unfortunately so, it wasn't going to be easy, as this place was heavily guarded by security. It didn't matter where I went, I was constantly triggering security to come and kick my ass. No weapons allowed past this point. 
Well, that's simple. I'll just drop all my weapons. So I, I pretty much did. All of them. What? Even the metal detector was out to get me and I was left fleeing through the cafeteria for my life with little to no health left to play with. Lucky for me though, I had random bystanders defending me from security. We finally made it to the Bullfish Interactive main office. Instead of handing over the gold master, the CEO revealed plans to produce a mass ripoff of the game. I'll be taking that. Uh -oh. Well, fuck, it looks like the CEO had other plans and now we're in a boss fight. What are we gonna do? What do we possibly have in our arsenal to get us out of this sticky situation? Well, we throw a cat down and grab his rocket launcher, disarming him and rendering him completely useless. The man was scared, panicked and dashed for his backup weapons, but we beat him to it. He was already extremely exhausted. We pissed on him, we chased him with the machete and we threw the rest of the cats on him. Hell! I even pulled out the weed whacker to hit him. We abused the cat glitch and it, it, it took a while. Now with the Bullfish Interactive CEO done and dusted and eaten by cats, we finish the day. Sunday morning begins and we wake up to find that Vince's house has been overrun by zombies. It is now up to Vince, the Sunday has arrived and we're tasked with defending Vince's house from a horde of zombies. Our challenge is to eliminate 50 of them. And by challenge, I mean running around aimlessly while my fellow running with scissors staff kill the zombies for me. I guess you can now call me a useless employee. Useless employee of the year. The staff really know how to handle themselves against the horde of zombies while I went for a morning stroll. This was definitely one of the easier missions. Well, that about wraps it up for that zombie infestation. While I was on my way back into town, I was stopped by a Mexican man. <laughs> yes, that's what it says in the wiki. To talk business. And by business, I mean... Another killing mission? Well, folks, it was time to outsmart the game again by provoking the elephants to attack the general public. Elephants are beautiful and delicate creatures that I love dearly, but the residents of Postal clearly fucking hate them. I wish I was joking when I say that this mission flew by. I mean, these elephants were dropping like flies and I didn't even need to lift a finger. Soon after the massacre, the vegetarians caught up to me, enraged of current events. Now it's time for the game to get a bit interesting as we step into unwelcomed territory. This is the terrorist training ground and they still hate me from the church incident a few days ago. As we navigate the grounds, wagging our fingers, we reach an area of constant death. Every turn, every jump, every meter I covered, I was hit by a rocket that sent me flying. This rocket wielding lunatic wouldn't give up as if his life depended on it. But what if he couldn't depend on his legs anymore? By throwing this machete, we can safely disable him without negatively affecting our challenge. Trust me, give it a go. If you thought I was done, this was just the beginning. By crouch jumping over this fence, we are now safe from that terrible room full of terrorists that you will never want to endure on a pacifist run like this. With one health and a dream, we wagged our finger once more to defend ourselves from our attackers. Oh, and this next part sucks. I was frothing in rage. Every turn I went, I was kissing the enemy directly on the bottom. I felt helpless and I couldn't do anything. It was one room after another, constantly bombarded by terrorist gunfire. Take a slower pace when getting into firefights? A slower pace. Anybody know of any terrorist attacks coming up soon? It was now time to make the appropriate exit, which of course, jumping over the fence. Why wouldn't you, you know? <laughs> it was about damn time the National Guard showed up to rescue me from this hellhole, but unfortunately, it wasn't that simple. They ended up arresting me and throwing me into a holding cell. I did the first thing that came to mind. I pulled out a box of matches and lit my fellow cellmate up. It's fine, he doesn't count statistically. Don't worry, he's okay. He got immediate medical attention and was able to return home in a week. The one thing that bugs me about this area is the fact that I can't even use my middle finger properly. Like, it's bloody broken, okay? 
Our goal was quite simple. We had to escape the Paradise military base from these absolute lunatics. I took on every opportunity I could get to piss off the National Guard. But this next area left me a bit puzzled. The sign clearly stated no firearms beyond this point, but the National Guard didn't give a flying fucking sausage. This explosion nearly blew me bloody eardrums out. But you know me, I had to keep trying and I kept dying over and over and it just, it, it, would, it never ended. All I did was trigger the explosion with my pistol, okay? No, nobody was, nobody was murdered. Nobody at all. But during my escape plan, I thought, fuck it. Why not? Why not just steal a nuclear warhead? Ah, uh, what in the Elder Scrolls for oblivion is this? What? I've come this far and I, I swear, I, I didn't smoke the I guess this is what happens when you steal a warhead from the National Guard. Gaming loot! Upon trying to leave, it looks like majority of the enemies were taken care of. Zombies and wild dogs had now overrun the military base, but Gary Coleman was overrunning my head, and I kept seeing disturbing images of him on doors. We finally escaped from the military base, and it was utterly exhausting. You could even tell the postal dude was tired too. While the National Guard had a tough time catching up to me, I was already back at Bullfish Interactive, ready to plant the warhead that I rightfully stole. But then I realized I had forgotten something. Perhaps it was my head wound that suddenly reminded me of my dog, Champ. He was at the pound, and I was ready to pick him up. Fuck you. There were other dogs there too, dressed in strange BDSM armor, and thankfully I had some tasty treats to calm them down. But I soon ran out of tasty treats and was cornered by the mob of sexually confused pound dogs. Suddenly, there was my dog Champ. Sensing I was in danger, Champ leapt to the rescue, attacking the other dogs to save my life. The apocalypse was truly starting to show as we left the pound. You know I had to do some cheeky parkour to avoid a bunch of enemies. <laughs> Fleeing one last time, we were nearly back to recover our mobile trailer home. Oh god, it's one of those Gary Coleman mind fucks again, isn't it? What in God's name is that? Mad Cow Mike J. Well, it looks like the final boss is actually one of the RWS staff that fought off those zombies at the start of Sunday. This is fun, because guess what? The boss isn't a stat, so that means we can go balls to the walls. Finally, all this pent-up rage I've had for this entire week of being a pacifist, I can finally blow off some steam, knowing that it won't hurt my pacifist run. <laughs> Well, there you have it, folks. That is the Apocalypse Weekend Pacifist completed. Sure, we hacked 33 limbs off during this playthrough, but it's safe to say that they were never murdered. Right?